Hello and welcome to the Run Testers, Kieran here, and welcome back to our second episode of our Essential Running Kit. Now this is a series where I'm challenging all of the Run Testers to select four items from their running wardrobe, from all their running kit, that they can't bear to run without. These are the things that they go back to time and time again. They're tried, they're tested, they are trusted, they are the things that we will rely on when it comes to the crunch on race day. Just those things that you really, really turn to time and time again. We spoke to Tom last time out, and this time we're flipping it over. It's over to Nick to tell us what his four items are. So welcome, Nick. You're second in the hot seat to take us through your running essentials. Have you picked your four items? I have. I have picked my four items, which is very hard. Was it difficult? Are these because some some of these things you sort of think, well, this is going to be easy because I've got those things that I go to all the time. But actually, to pick the things that are going to resonate, um, and actually having quite a lot of favourites, it's it's difficult for us because of the run test. We get to test a lot of kit, right? Yeah, exactly. And also, like some things are absolute like race day essentials, and they're still my favourite kit. But I, you know, I might actually not wear them for four months at a time. But I still want to kind of talk them up because yeah, actually, when it matters most, they're essential to me. So I've kind of got a bit of a mix of that and then everyday stuff. I, Nick, I love you for a category. You you like you categorising them. You'd have race day essentials, <laughs> windy day essentials, forest run essentials. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I like, like different kind of runs. <laughs> I like that approach. So without further ado, then, what is your number one? pick for us so my first pick is really probably the one i use the absolute most and it's a bit like tom actually i also have a fitletic running belt but i have got the mini pouch which doesn't have the little things on the side that tom does okay and those so that you, you haven't got the incorporated kind of gel belt set up there. yeah no i don't need basically this is just a phone holder for me like my keys if i take them with me will be in a pocket and i use this for kind of shorter races actually even in shorter races i might not take anything with me anyway and if i am going for a full marathon i will actually upgrade to a flip belt just because it takes so much more stuff and i carry an absurd amount of stuff in a marathon but um, for everyday running every single day i've used this for probably a year and a half um this is perfect it's just takes my phone a really big phone um i've even broken the zip and it still opens easily you can get stuff in and out it basically stays the right length which is quite good with these belts and if you do have to adjust it it's really easy and it, can you what what's what's your phone actually? So what size phone are you fitting in there? Do you think you can fit some of the really big kind of iPhones and stuff in there? Yeah. So right now I'm using an iPhone 11, but in the past I've used the 8 Plus in it. Basically the plus size ones, the phablets I've put in this, and there's always room to spare. Like it stretches anyway, um, holds it really tight against you. There's no bounce, but you can get your phone kind of any time you want if you want to, um, you know, shoot something uh, <laughs> or just generally see your phone. To be honest, like, you know, there, is the, there was a time I didn't take my phone on my runs, but actually I've got a young baby now. I'm nearly always running against the clock. And, I, you know, if something's going on or I'm meant to be back because the baby's woken up, I need my phone with me. And this is the most comfortable way to carry it, I find. And have you got inside the pouch, is there like a, you know, some of them have the separation. So if you did want to take a key or a card or something, you've got there a little is. bit of extra screen protection. Exactly, yeah. There's a little, little pouch there that you can put your keys or a card in. Um, I, so I tend to put my keys in my shorts or, um, or even... Um, hide them near my house i wouldn't tell you where um, uh, but usually someone's in because it's locked down so actually if it's if it, during lockdown obviously I, I won't take my keys but if you there is a little pouch there but it tends to kind of push the belt away from your waist so i'd rather put my keys in a pocket to be honest this is really just a phone holder for me and and how much are we talking for for that model so it's cheap basically yeah <laughs> the mini pouch is cheap so I think kind of RRP is around twenty pounds, twenty dollars, but actually um, you're never really paying that much. I think um, I think I got it for about uh, eleven ninety nine in like a in a running shop. But yeah, look online, Amazon, eBay, even um, it's it's a very simple piece of kit. But it's just it's just there are a lot of there are a lot of running belts out there. It almost look exactly the same as this, and it look you know they're going to be exactly as good, but they're not. This doesn't need adjusting. It fits phones. It's very comfortable. It's worth paying for the Fitletic Mini, I think, as opposed to just a generic stuff thing off eBay, which I did used to use, but don't like as much. And durability wise, one thing I've found with some of these is the zip can go, and um, that's kind of almost like the first thing that will break. Uh, I have broken the zip, but only the bit, you know, the kind of you pull along with, the actual yeah. runner is fine. And like I say, I've, I've had 18 months and I run five or six times a week, 
six days or five or six days a week and it's on every single time i've had no problems with durability so yeah i back it only problem was i had to get the one that was black and pink and really there's one that's completely pink it's a bit nicer probably and there's some blue ones but yeah you know yeah you have to choose the one that's in the sale really <laughs> so good that's that's a good um good kind of uh, mileage per pounds or dollars yeah, kind of exactly, ratio yeah. There on that yeah. you won't regret spending 12 pounds on this <laughs> nice okay so now you're carrying your phone but what's your what's your second item take us on to your second item uh so my second item we're going to go on to a race day and key run training run essential and this is morton's drink mix uh 320 the bigger size basically um yeah so like i say i don't use this for every run obviously because it contains 80 grams of carbs and you don't need that for you, your 5k easy <laughs> but um basically i have never found another energy drink that's as good as this in terms of the actual performance um, and the complete lack of stomach distress. I'm not someone who struggles massively with like gastro distress, but um, I've never had any kind of problems at all with Morton and I have had problems with other stuff. Um, so we, I know obviously you're a big fan as well, Karen, so we can talk about the science of it a bit if you like. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a couple of really interesting things about Morton. So they've got the 320 and there's a 160 as well if you want slightly kind of less yeah, carbohydrate. Yeah, delivery and then you can also get a gel but i think the interesting thing is the way that this is this kind of reacts in the stomach right yeah exactly yeah so when it when it hits stomach acid it forms a hydrogel which um basically is a way to protect it's to stop kind of the sugar hitting the stomach lining directly i think it's actually a technique used in medicines that are very hard on the stomach so the gel basically protects your stomach lining so you don't have a reaction to the kind of contents of the, the sugar in this case or the medicine which might have something you know far more far worse than sugar um, and basically that hydrogel forms and it gets slowly absorbed by the body in a way that's very comfortable and you know doesn't cause that kind of either cramping or nausea or you know the really common problem that we all know is which you need to find a port -a um, so basically yeah, it's a very very comfortable thing to take and you get a consistent rate of carbs um, uh, and yeah and you get a huge amount of carbs as well so I think and Morton states on that you can absorb up to 90 grams of carbs an hour and this is 80 so you know you're covered for a long time there, a lot longer than you are with a single gel, which will take, you know, 22 grams. Yeah, and I think it's, I believe it's got like, it's got that kind of dual system. So there's two different, essentially two different yeah. types of carbohydrates. So the uptake is kind of extended by the fact that your body is absorbing kind of carbs from two different sources there. I think the other really interesting thing with the Morton, and back me up, is this the thing you like, is that it doesn't really have a flavor, right? Yeah, it's like, it's very slightly sweet, but it's closer to neutral. You can absolutely chug this. Um, and, you know, it's not going to linger in your mouth at all. It's also got a little bit of sodium, and I should say that for electrolytes. But yeah, that taste is really important, I think. And I think, I basically, I think the proof in the pudding with this is that I use it, I have a big, I have a whole bottle of this before I start a marathon, 500 grams, and then I will carry two 250 mil soft flasks with me in a race day marathon, just so I can have this with me. Uh, which looked ridiculous because you know I'm <laughs> reasonably quick I'm up the front of the pen everyone's wearing absolutely nothing they've got like two gels and I've got a running belt on me with two water flasks in just because I think this is so good that I want it with me in the marathon and I've run three marathons with it um, and they've been my three best marathons and I've had never had like close to a kind of crash really and, and the interesting thing on a race day actually and I've done this with it wasn't actually with Morton but with another fuel that I like I used to carry a 750 mil bottle on my back you don't really notice it but you get the benefit of being able to charge through aid stations, drink yeah. whenever you want, which I, I found, A, it gives you a little bit of confidence. You don't have to worry about when's the station coming up. Am I going to run out of fuel? Am I going to have water? All those things go to one side, but you're also just charging past people who are reaching to the left, you know? Well, there's that. And basically, I mean, this is what elites use Morton. A lot of them, Kipchoge uses it. Um, and a lot of them don't have like partnerships with Morton or anything. They just, they want to use it. And, you know, and they get to, they obviously get their drinks handed to them on the go. I'm not quick enough to get, you know, drink service in a race. But, and I, I don't have to carry a running belt or anything. So a running back, backpack, I use a flip belt and the soft flask, you can slide into that. So it's still a waist belt. And basically I use them through training. They cost six pounds from decathlon. And in a race day, I'll drink it and I'll throw the soft uh, flask away at an appropriate place i won't just litter um and you know and that means i'm not carrying anything else with me or they crush down if you do want to keep them in your running belts so you're not carrying any extra weight and it really is worth it i think if you to get the drink that i think is this good basically so nick there's also a new caffeine variety out now right yeah it comes in a white pack it's got it's, it's called drink mix uh 320 100 caff but it's got 100 milligrams of caffeine in it uh, which is good. Uh, I don't tend to use loads of caffeine in my training because I really like coffee um, and I want to have my caffeine for that day from kind of two big mugs of coffee. But on race day, I might have a caffeine gel or something, but I'll probably still stick to this myself. 
And the other thing we should probably talk about is the price. How much does this cost? Because it's, it's not cheap, is it? No, it's expensive. You're looking at over, 40, about, I think it's about £43, $48 for a pack of 14 sachets. So that's why I say it's really your key. So don't go using these for your midweek track. You can maybe use the smaller, the 160 or another energy drink. I save these for my key long runs where I'm doing long stints at marathon pace and then the race day itself or like a half marathon, I'll have one of these beforehand. So they'll get me through one, a box of 14 will get me through one cycle basically of kind of, you know, three, four months of training, a half, couple of half marathon races and marathon race. Nice, so we've gone for a bit of a fuel there. That's different from the from the apparel and shoes and watches that we normally kind of have on the channel. But yeah. moving back, what's on? What's number three on your list? I mean, back to apparel. And this, this is a bit of a luxury. Um, I won't lie. It's a very, very expensive gilet. It's um, Saw, uh, Saw Running's Ultra Gilet. Um, and you're probably thinking... Listen, listen just, just to explain, a, when you say gilet, you basically mean a jacket without sleeves, right? A sleeveless jacket, basically, yeah. Just keeps <laughs> your core warm. Uh, so you're going to say, why do I need a gilet? And you're right to ask, especially when it's £165 or whatever it is. <laughs> um, yeah. but, why, do you, why do you need a gilet? <laughs> so, obviously, you know, it's, it's a, a slightly old one, but from autumn through to spring, this is the bit of kit that I wear the most, basically. I, I'm quite a frail man. <laughs> I feel the cold, but at the same time, I want to run fast. I don't want to be restricted on my runs. So if it's an easy run, I might go for a full jacket, but for even steady runs, I would rather wear a gilet, have the freedom of not having sleeves, not having basically that connect, the kind of bit of fabric from here to here, I think is the thing that actually gets in the way when you're running. Um, and the gilet does a brilliant job. Like it's, it's kind of water resistant, it's windproof. Wind is the key. I really hate wind. Uh, um, and it makes me so sad on runs when it's like a cold wind. And this just protecting your core. A, I mean, it does actually obviously protect your core. It keeps you warm, but it's a huge mental thing for me as well. Like if I'm running through a headwind and I feel like I've got this on, I feel a bit like, you know, invul invulnerable, a bit more, you know, up for it when I'm pushing hard. Um, and I've got a bit of protection. My core's, you know, warmer, a bit drier. But at the same time, I can still run my sessions in it, which I think is really important. I don't, I don't like to have too much on if I'm running hard because it's not, it's not that I tend to overheat. It's more that I just, don't, I hate having too much on when you're running fast. It's just you don't feel like you want it. It feels like it's in the way, and a G-Lay doesn't basically. And what's what? Remind us what the brand of that is. What's the brand and the specific model of the one that you've been enjoying? So th this is Saw. They're like quite a small British brand, um, and it's called the Ultra G-Lay. Um, it's got you know things like reflective details. Uh, Saw, like they're an amazing brand if you're looking for kind of elite gear. Basically, they they're kind of basically I think their idea is that they take the approach to a kind of running apparel that people are taking to shoes, looking for marginal gains. And obviously, you know that's a little bit more nebulous. Like you know your running vest being 0.3 of a gram lighter isn't going to change anything on race day, but it does mean that their training gear while still being warm and kind of comfortable is also cut and designed to be lightweight so you can still run quick so they even have like jackets and tempo tops that you could actually run quite hard and even tights actually that i found that you could use for sessions which i do think is a really nice focus if you really are concerned about speed and you, you know every you know if you want to nail every training session but you don't want to be cold you don't want to be wet um, some of their gear is really good for that and are there any special features on that pockets other things that, that you've enjoyed as well so you get pockets, which I don't use. So um, there is a big pocket on the back. It could take a phone, but it is going to flap around. Don't want that. I'd rather have the phone in the belt tight against me. There's also a chest pocket, which is too small for a kind of modern phone, like a phablet. If you've got an old Nokia or something, you can slip it in there. Um, or keys, cards, they can go in there. And that's kind of more stationary. That's not going to bounce around too much. Um, but generally, I'd still use my belt. I'd rather have my top clear of stuff because I do think it moves too much on the run. Uh, there's a slightly like little lining on the collar there, nice and cosy around your neck. Uh, and there's some reflective details, the usual stuff. I think this also comes in like a really bright yellow color if you're worried about kind of visibility, but obviously teal is one of the best colors. So do buy the teal one. And what about kind of um, washing all that kind of thing and sort of looking after it? So yeah, it doesn't, I find gilets don't tend to pick up a lot, especially in winter when you're not necessarily sweating through all your gear onto your outer layer. But um, uh, you, I wash it kind of every, probably every month on a very, very cool, gentle, usually on the wool wash setting on a washing machine, something like that. Basically, I have, a, I have a few bits of gear that I save up for one big kind of delicate wash. So I have like a merino top, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, you don't have to wash it very much. It smells okay. I've been using it for about a month and a half without washing it, it's fine. <laughs> nice. And finally, just remind us again, how much that's gonna cost. You mentioned that it might not be available in the US yet. 
Yeah, so it's 162 pounds in the UK, and it's 100. It's listed as 183 dollars for the US. I think Saw do free shipping to the US now um, if you spend a certain amount, and basically their gear is quite expensive, so you are going to spend that amount. Um, if you do need something else to kind of bulk out, then I, I'd highly recommend some of their shorts. They're really comfortable and um, very quick. And probably the more people from the US who clamour for the gear, the more likely they are to come and be yeah. native over there as well. So if you exactly, want to yeah. tell them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, do you want to, the parallel is probably Tracksmith over there, I guess. Which I haven't used their stuff. It looks very stylish. It's quite hard to get in the UK. You have to pay quite big shipping fees. It's a bit similar, but I would say saw a more perform performance focused, like obsessively so, uh, to the point where you know, it's, it's, sometimes it's, it's just nonsense. But it is, you know, it's nice that they have that attention to detail uh, on everything. Like even arm sleeves, they'll have like, we've got grips at these exact points and there's like a little thing around the elbow and. I really like it that the company takes such pride in what they do and really targets it at fast people. Um, not, not sorry, not not at fast people. At people who want to run fast whilst you know being comfortable in their clothing. Okay, brilliant. So that's the uh, that's the saw gilet, and you have one more pick. Yeah, uh, your final <laughs> selection. I feel like you shouted this out on your video of Tom, but it's a headband. Um, it's a light blue headband. It's my lucky headband. <laughs> it was always going to be a headband. <laughs> um, this is made by Buff. Um, everyone knows Buff for their neck things, but they also make excellent headbands. And if you use the neck thing as a headband, it is too much material. You do need a dedicated headband. Um, and I can show you how good it will look if you do do that. <laughs> um, so this exact one, uh, my, I had one in the exact same colour, it was my lucky headband, I lost it, my wife got me the exact same one to replace it. It's a buff dry fix headband, uh, which is quite a lightweight one, you can use it in hot days and cold days, and it's always comfortable. Basically I really hate having sweat on my forehead uh, during races, I'll spend, the, I'll spend the whole race just doing this, and this stops me doing that, uh, and I look really, really good. Is it true though that you, you kind of have to be fast to get away with a headband? <laughs> No, it, absolutely not. Everyone, mid packers, back of the packers, everyone should be wearing headbands. It's uh, look, I'll come clean. I will say this. I know you guys are all big hat guys. The rest of the run testers, I will wear a hat for most of my training runs. Uh, the Ifley Road Putney cap is my favourite hat, which is another small British brand. Um, uh, but when it really matters, you do want to wear a headband, and um, I think uh, I think more people should basically. So I don't stand out so much because it, it is usually just me. <laughs> so when when you slip it when you're slipping on that headband is that that's you going into into Quaich winning not <laughs> second second you know marathon mode you're you're kind of it's like your race armor yeah exactly yeah like I'll slip it on like I have other headbands too for different races for you know your key marathons your key half marathons on the road I will wear this exact headband I've got like a nice merino wool one which is good for kind of cross country races it's a little bit more understated I do find if I go to a club race people are going to look at the headband with more uh, derision than they will at like a big uh, a big <laughs> mass participation event so I will I will tend to tone down the colour scheme there at least <laughs> so there you have it colour coded headbands people that's what you need for, for race days so Nick tell us how much is that headband going to set us back uh, so this is another one that's going to vary massively. I think I think basically it's listed. It's, it's, the RRP is a bit mad on the Buff website. It's like sixteen pounds eighty one in the UK. And I think it's like just seventeen dollars in the US. But again, it's one that the price is just going to fly around. Um, just find it on third party sites. Keep going. Trying to find the best color. There's an Olympian blue version of this right now, which is a slightly um, darker blue. It's really nice. I would like that headband. Um, but that's I don't know if you can even get this exact color right now, which is gutting. I know for so many people out there, but um, you will be able to find a good color of this headband, the dry fix headband. I have this mad vision of your kind of um, your bedroom at home with loads of those <laughs> mannequin heads lined up with headbands on each one of them. I wish because like, if I'd done that, I wouldn't have lost this the first version of this, which I like. I know it's still here somewhere. I just I've got too much gear. I can't find it anywhere. It's in a rucksack somewhere. I think I might have thrown it away after a race, which would be absurd. <laughs> it's a poor show. Well, listen, Nick, thanks, thanks for joining us. Thanks for your picks. Very, very enlightening. It's great to hear from somebody who's very much at the front of the pack on the picks that they're using in their, in their training. Um, yeah, no, thank you very much for having me. Uh, I, I enjoyed, enjoyed telling you about headbands. I always enjoy speaking about headbands. <laughs> so there you have it. That's Nick's four picks from his essential running kit. We're going to stick links down in the captions so you can for, find out more information about those four items down below. We'll be talking to Mike soon, and you can find the video that we did earlier with Tom around here on the channel. We'll put a card up above. And also, don't forget, we want to hear what your top items are. What are your go-tos? Hit us up in the comments and share the things that you don't run without, those things that you've used year in, year out, 
or that you'll buy more than one of in case they're discontinued or they change design. Hit us up, tell us what they are, and also share them with the other runners because we're looking to help people find the really, really good tried and tested kit out there. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Ring the bell so that next time we have a Running Essentials kit video pop up, you'll be notified to come and watch it. I've been Kieran, we've been the Run Testers. Thank you very much for listening and we hope to see you again soon. Uh, uh,